This is my graphics engine that I started working on one month ago. And well, you see, it's kind of bad. And I want to make it better. So let's do that. Okay, first step is fixing whatever the fuck this is. The entire project is a mess and needed some massive refactoring. So I spent time rewriting a bunch of code, separating it into different classes, and actually just optimizing the hell out of it. But we still have a problem. Currently inside the scene, we can have different objects, lights and even a camera, but there is no way to manage it. Issue number two is that even though all of these are entities in the scene, they are controlled by different files. So actually managing it is kind of hard. What did I do to fix it? Well, I developed an ECS system, uh, which means entity component system for those who don't know. Think of it like this. I can create an empty entity, then I can just add different components to it. For example, a transform component to control its position, rotation and scale, or a mesh renderer component. Honestly, if you have ever used any type of engine, you have most likely have been familiar with this system. It also means that managing things in the scene is actually nice and easy. Step 2 of making this engine better is fixing this yucky, ooh, bad UI. I am in luck and saw this video by the Cherno where he actually went and fixed his bad UI, so don't mind if I steal this. But no guys, for real, I didn't actually steal anything. That being said, I made the UI go from this abomination to this. It's not perfect, but I can actually look at it without throwing up. Oh, I would have almost forgotten, I also added this gizmo, with the help of this library. And funnily enough, getting that to work took longer than literally anything I have said so far. Beautiful. Okay, so now it's really time for some advanced features. Basically, I'm going to rework the rendering. Now, this might get a little confusing, so listen up. At the moment, the project is using something called forward rendering. This is the default rendering most things use, and actually something I've always used. Basically, it means the game draws one object at a time. And while drawing those objects, it also applies lighting and effects immediately. Then once it finishes with one object, it just moves on to the next one. But we're going to implement something called deferred rendering, where the process is split into two passes, the geometry pass and the lighting pass. In the geometry pass, we store data like color, normals, data into different textures about an object. And we do this for every object. Then in the lighting pass, the engine will calculate lighting for the entire scene. Why do I want to do this? Well, there are pros and cons, but I thought it could be kind of fun. Uh, so uh, let's do it. I'm gonna approach this one pass at a time to just not complicate things, so geometry pass first. For this I created a bunch of textures, actually just a structure and then an array of that structure, but I guess that is still a bunch of textures. I proceeded to then go into the main loop and mess around with the rendering to make sure that those textures are actually being used and rendered to the screen and whatnot. But more importantly, I also made a new pixel and vertex shader that just renders the object and stores the data into those different textures. So now the scene looks like this. No lighting. I can also show you all the different textures. So here we have the data for the albedo, which is the color. Here we have the data for the normal and then for the position. Now we need the lighting pass. So this was a little bit of a pain um, since I couldn't actually get this to work for a couple of days. But basically, I just created some new shaders that calculate the lighting for the entire scene, and then in the main code made it so all the textures that have the data and also the lighting get added together to have this. I can switch between the different modes, and this is actually how you can tell the main difference. Um, and it's slightly kind of cool, I guess. Um, but to be honest, it's pretty good because the optimization of this engine is now better, and I can have a ton of lights in here with no issues now. Before we continue, if you want to get into game dev or programming, then today's sponsor Game Maker is the answer. Game Maker is actually what started off my channel and my programming journey. And while I talk to you about it, I will try and create a little game in just one minute. Okay, I'm gonna draw a plastic bottle. Game Maker is suited for both beginners, intermediates and advanced users. Plus, you can make games for pretty much any platform like PC, iOS, Android, PlayStation, etc. Game Maker has been used to make many successful games like Undertale, Hyper Light Drifter, Hotline Miami and more, so safe to say you can make awesome games with it. 
It also has a big community behind it on Reddit, forums and Discord, so you can find fellow developers, interact and get help when needed. Okay, this is my bottle, guys. Personally, the thing that I love about GameMaker is everything you need is in the engine. Its own script editor, or drag and drop if you like, a sprite editor, and a way to animate. So no third-party software needed. Not gonna lie, I have like 20 seconds left because I spent all my time drawing this bottle, so I'm just gonna fill the room with them. <laughs> GameMaker has been around for a long time, so there is plenty of tutorials, resources and docs available, and new updates keep coming out. Here is the game guys, it's really epic, for real. No, but actually it's like the best thing ever. So if any of this sounds appealing at all, then you can check out GameMaker with the first link down below, and start making games today for free. Now let's continue. Okay, the next few features are gonna be kinda random, but I don't really know how to present them because they are just so different. Um, anyways, let's go. Firstly, I added specular maps. Whoa. A specular map is basically just a texture that controls how shiny or reflective different parts of an object are. This implementation was kind of easy, I basically just made a new texture in the graphics buffer and then did some calculations in the shader. Here are some examples of the textures I implemented, specifically the checkered one is the most obvious because it's black and white alternating so you can really see it, but I also added some other examples. Next up I implemented custom depth calculations so that I can get depth of field working in the project. Basically, instead of using DirectX, I made my own stuff. Um, why did I make my own stuff? Well, to be honest, actually making my own for some reason was easier than using the built-in stuff. It makes no sense, I don't know what I was doing at the time of making this. But here is an example with the objects up close being dark and black, and the ones further away being red. With this, basically, I was also able to add depth of field. Then I really went off the rails because I decided to add an animation component. It looks fairly simple, and it kind of is. But implementing this means I can animate objects. At the moment, I only added animation for the object's transform and position, but in the future I actually want to implement other factors like maybe the texture, scale, etc. And I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. Another random feature are these example scenes. It's just different things showing different things. Oh my, what an explanation, Gabby. Um, yeah, basically it's just different example scenes showing, well, different things. I'm saying the same thing over again. You, you get what I mean by example scene. Well, here they are. Okay, we're now actually moving on to the final feature, which is kind of cool and it's better than basically everything I have said so far, uh, and is basically implementing different lighting types. At the moment, the only light type in the project is the point light, so what I did is I wrote a new function for calculating directional lighting, and then I did the same but for spotlights. So now when you're in the project, you can select your light and actually change its type, and the way the lighting will work is going to be different based on that type, which is, you know, cool. And well, that pretty much wraps everything that I've done so far. I know that it doesn't seem like a lot, but the thing is, a lot of these features actually just took a really long time to implement, specifically the optimization and reworking of the project, plus the entire deferred rendering was actually just like a large portion. Um, but anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working on this engine, and hopefully in some time I'll have another video out for you guys with well, the new features. And also when I do release the next video, I will actually give you guys the source code of the project. At the moment, it's kind of not in a state where you're gonna wanna do anything with it. But anyway guys, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe. We are trying to reach 100,000 subscribers and we are so, 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 so close. And also, if you wanna start your game dev journey, then check out GameMaker with a link down below. It will be in the description and also pinned as a comment. And thank you for watching this video. I will see you guys next time. Bye.